Okay, good morning. It is uh, about 10.30 on a Wednesday morning. We've got some nice weather to talk about, really stunning spring-like weather in the Bay Area and around the state. We're going to talk a little bit about pollen. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the temperature changes we're going to experience. It's going to cool off a little this weekend and how warm it's going to get today. As a matter of fact, San Francisco today, 71 degrees for a daytime high. I'll stick that right there. Santa Rosa, 79, almost 80 degrees. Concord, 80 degrees in the San Jose, 77. Crescent City is 59, further north, right? Bernie, 68, and Redding, 78. Chico, 80 degrees. Sacramento, 80 degrees. And uh, LA, 85 degrees. And San Diego, 75. So that's, if there was ever a spring array of temperatures, that was it. Um, this is the Alert California UC San Diego page. And I just wanted you to see it in its raw form so you can get excited about it too. Uh, it's on my links page. It's easy to find. These are all the sites you can have access to. And then when you get to the page, um, it shows you, well, like for instance, this one down here, I can take a panorama. So I'm just moving it around. Um, which I like that shot. And then there's a static camera on this guy here on this particular um, site. The site, all the sites are a little teeny bit different. Mainly they, they're fire, they're for fire, right, for fire spotting, but they're awesome sightseeing can, cameras. Um, we can see, if we look at this, we can put a loop on this one, but you can see the smoke down in the little bit of smoke. They're doing some controlled burning when the sun comes up. I think, yeah, you see the smoke down in here. So some controlled burns going on, which is a good time of year to do it. I think there's some other, I saw another burn area too. Oh, here it is down in here. Or maybe it's not controlled burns, but it looks like that might be burning. Um, and then you've got uh, temperatures today at Mount Shasta, like 68 degrees. So a really, really nice day. Um, we have a satellite image showing, this is infrared. So it's just showing temperatures and it shows the system offshore. This system, this low center here, that's the circular clock, counterclockwise flow. Um, just shows the system arcing to the north, right? And it's being driven by the upper level winds. This is at the surface, that low I showed you, that the upper level winds are going like this. The upper level winds are the jet stream. So you see the ridge, right? So here's the trough, the low pressure, and here's the ridge. And this works, the surface pressure systems are, in this case, probably the same. So you got a high pressure at the surface, a high pressure aloft in the ridge, low pressure here at the surface, and you've got a low pressure trough aloft, and there is the jet stream. So it's super easy to find, and when that jet stream is pumping up, you're warming up, and that's what's happening. You can see the arcing of the clouds. So not, that's, it's more complex than that, but it's really not. Um, and then this is the, let's see if I can zoom that up a little bit. Oh, I guess I just did. This is the uh, visible, pardon me, visible satellite. And I just want you to see, what can we see? We can see the snow in the Sierra Nevada. We can see Mount Lassen and all the snow that they've had up there. Mount Shasta here, Point Conception, or Point Cape Mendocino here. You can see valley fog down just eastern side of Bakersfield. A little bit of valley, how it kind of contours the, the topography. And you can see Nevada is just Nevada right now, right? <laughs> it's just, look at the deserts. I mean, when you look at, this map is so awesome. When you look at the desert, you go, yeah, yeah, there's not a lot growing there. I mean, this map, visible, so it shows the green of California, right? You don't see a lot of green once you get over the hill, right? And that's, that's rain shadow effect. See the Sierra Nevada blocking off the rain from the Nevada. When you, you look at that, it's a stark, stark indication of where the rain falls. So California is awesome. The amount of rain we get, um, you know, in terms of... The ability to, you know, if, if, if you could get a bunch of rain in some of these other areas, you could grow more stuff, obviously. But California gets a lot of rain, and then they get this snow bank here, which is um, money in the bank in terms of rainfall or runoff for the spring. So there you go. It looks like a nice day, and it's going to maintain that all day today and all day tomorrow. And then on Saturday, it's going to cool off just a little bit. We'll see that here. Um, this is the GFS, surface sea level pressure and precipitation. We see a little click go by, right? That's on Thursday afternoon, Friday. Nothing, nothing, nothing. A little bit of wind. See the, the isobars getting close together, the black lines? So a little windy on Saturday. Breezy, we'll call it. Kind of spring, spring. Breezy all over the entire state on Saturday and into Sunday. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, the weekend's gonna be breezy. It's gonna be spring-like, and your pollen, the pollen, the tree pollens, are gonna be something you notice quite a bit when you get breezy conditions like this. So nice warm days. Even on the in the on the breezy conditions, we're gonna stay kind of mild and warm. Not as warm as we will be today and tomorrow. We'll cool down a little bit, but we're still going to be in the 60s and 70s throughout the state. Uh, the, the reason you can tell that, if you just want to do a quick primer on the um, ISA, the um, thickness lines. So if we go here, thickness here, higher thickness, lower thick, right? And there's the higher thickness, the warmer air. If you watch the model, it starts to bowl up. See how it kind of the lines come up? That's in response to the ridge and it shows the th temperatures increasing. But then watch what happens when this little trough goes by on Thursday afternoon, Friday. See how the lines start to come back down? And then watch what happens. Uh, they come down, they come down, they come down, and then they start to go back up on Saturday and Sunday. So that's warming, cooling, warming, cooling, and it's in, it's in um, response to the ridging and the troughing. I know. No, it's a lot, but it's really not. If you just, you, it'll repeat. We'll do it tomorrow and it'll do the same thing. You go, oh, oh, I'm pretty certain it'll sink in. You go, oh, okay, makes sense. Because it's, it's pattern recognition with weather. And this time of year, I've seen how many, I've been doing weather for 40, oh, God, a long time, 45 years, 48 years, long time. But um, that's, you just get used to looking. You go, oh, yeah, okay, that's what's happening. And you know what's going to happen. Sun angle, um, you know, just the, the usual stuff. So here is the, the precip accumulation forecast through the 25th of April. So it looks like we're dry, pretty dry. So snow in the mountains is going to start to go quickly. Skiing is going to start to um, deteriorate a little bit. Um, they will get, well, this is April 25th. So yeah, they'll, they'll be shutting them down in March, probably for the most part, a lot of the ski resorts. But uh, they got a good strong month out of it because that last snowfall was so... I would call it prolific for that late in the season. Uh, the U.S. satellite just kind of shows what we're talking about. Let's see if we can do. Uh, let's see if I can do it. Okay, we can. You can do it with me. Let's do the jet stream right here. I, I'm not always right on this, but I'm pretty close to right. See the ridging, and then see the troughing here. Right. So something like that. So and you can see the clouds. There's a, the ridge. See the trough. That's where we're warming up. This is why they're cooling down. And yeah. Okay, so we did that. Uh, this is the U.S. map showing where the watches and warnings are for today. The reds are representing, this represents fire danger in Montana, or pardon me, North Dakota, South Dakota, and down further south, down to Nebraska, Kansas. Um, just, yeah, high fire danger. And then the flooding concerns in the Mississippi and Ohio valleys which are still lingering from that last ex pretty significant rainfall. Here is the forecast for tomorrow. So it's kind of blah, not much going on. So we are in a very typical spring weather pattern. We've done weather. We can feel good about ourselves. Now we look at some pretty pictures. If you want to bail, bail. You got the weekend that's going to be a little cooler, a little breezier. But listen, it's a go do it period right now. Nothing's going to change much other than breezy conditions on the weekend. Swell on the coast. I noticed something earlier today. That's Ocean Beach. It's not giant, but it's it's okay size when you can see the, the white water there. Um, and you can also, we talk about, I, I, I wanted to talk about salt haze only because I, 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 I love seeing it. It's just artistically, it's beautiful. So I'm going to roll this loop and I'm going to put my arrow on this. So watch Ocean Beach. So see down here. So we'll see the, in the waves coming. Now see the salt? Can you see that? I hope it's not just my monitor. Now, I know that is probably sun angle as well, but you also get a good depiction of the, the, the particulate in the atmosphere. Isn't that awesome? And over, over the bay, too, because it's warm out here. But I love that loop. I love seeing that because you kind of, yeah. I think uh, salt haze, some of the prettiest things I've, uh, um, like out on the bay on a really hot day, uh, being over in Berkeley, and you see, and because of water evaporates, right? And then the salt is in the, gets floating in the air, the particulate. So, yeah, okay. The Mount Tam, we were just there, right, right, right here. And what else we got? We got Golden Gate Bridge. We got glassy conditions on the bay. A little bit of an onshore flow now. I noticed the winds at the gate are starting to blow out of the northwest a little bit. 
Uh, we'll go to Walnut Grove, a place I have yet to be. These are radio towers, and I was just thinking about this. I wonder if, radio towers are fascinating, by the way. When you grow up in a little small town, they're all you got, right? So up, we had the radio towers in Chico. I think there was one in Orville. Um, and they were, they, I mean, they're, they're, they're basically sending an energy pulse up and down that pole. So the t higher the pole, the bigger the wavelength which gives you more reach. This was AM radio back in the day. I shouldn't know exactly how this works. I'm not, but that's the premise. And so that's why the poles are so long because they're, they're jamming the signal and then it starts to send this wave. And the bigger this, the wavelength you can make, the further the signal will carry. And so that's why, you know, there's certain radio stations like WXRB, Wolfman Jack back in the, I used to listen to that. Um, I think he was down in, I can't remember where Wolfman Jack was. Was he down in Mexico? Yeah, that radio station was crazy. If you're a kid, grew up in the 60s, Wolfman Jack was nutty because he was blowing, he was blowing like, uh, it was a blowtorch. In other words, he was hitting like Alaska and Hawaii. I mean, because he was illegal, what the size of his wavelength that he was showing. One of you radio guys can tell me, explain that one to me. Because I, I thought that, I used to lay in my bed when I was a little kid in uh, paradise and you couldn't get much, right? You couldn't get a whole lot. This is... Uh, La Conchita, beautiful day down there. You couldn't get a lot of radio back in the day, right? And, you know, I think I got KHSL, KPAY. I think there's a radio station out of Sacramento I could get. This is back in the 60s. But Wolfman Jack, about midnight, when the atmospherics would get right, you could hear <laughs> cracking. You get ah, the Wolfman. And he's kind of racy dude, man. And so he was, he, there weren't rules with that guy. He wasn't dealing with, uh, is it F? FFC or what is the Federal Communications FCC? FCC. Um, he wasn't dealing with that. He was like going around it. So I'm going to Google that and, and see what the deal was. But if you're a little kid, you remember that. You know what I'm talking about. Wolfman Jack, WXRB. And he would like, he would do weird stuff. Like he would get on the, he'd call the operator and then get all weird with her. <laughs> and he'd put it live. And it, again, it was blasting out to Alaska and Hawaii. It was magical. And then you're a little kid. You're supposed to be in bed. It was just like midnight. So I'm laying in bed and under the covers with a little transistor radio, just barely making out every third or fourth word. Kind of weirdly magical. It was weird. Yeah. What did he say? He would say it was really, he was kind of creepy, but kind of awesome. Okay, so this is San Diego, San Diego, the University of, um, and the fog. I mean, that's actually the ocean there. And you can see it's a shallow, shallow marine layer and indicate indicative of high pressure and temperature in san diego today you guys can go 75 degrees this is we're skiing now yeah we are and this is lake tahoe and this is lake tahoe and this is warm temperatures are in the mid 40s up there right now where these folks are skiing and today down at the end of the down at the lodge it's going to be 58 60 degrees it's supposed to be warm but what a beautiful day and again you worried about water? Yeah, you always worry about water in California, but look at those hills. It is April 9th. The snow, that last snow dump was awesome. And we are uh, in good position with snow. We looked at the eight station index, right? And we know that we've got above average rainfall for the watersheds of or Lake Oroville and Lake Shasta. There are in other reservoirs as well, but they're really going to help us out. No, I'm not going to critique any skiers because I know what will happen. Is somebody will see me up on the hill and go, hey, Bill, you know what you could do? You could maybe just, right? I don't know. So I, you want to, I don't want to play that game because I'm not that good. Um, hmm, North Star. Yeah, North Star. A little, not, not as quiet as it was during spring break. Temperature down there at the lodge, probably in the upper 40s, low 50s right now. And then this is Kirkwood. A little warmer down the south side of the lake. And again, temperatures are on the warm side. This is Sensen Beach where we have... Houston, we have a problem. Let's go to Stenson Beach again. Here we go. Sometimes I got these new pop-ups showing up on my um, laptop. It drives me nuts. Stenson Beach, beautiful sunny day. Saturday is going to be busy out there. It's going to be breezy, and I think we'll see the fog return a little bit. Pretty good swell for Stenson, though, to get in there. So it's cleaner, right? And San Francisco is just to the south. You know what? If you can see down here, this is Montero Mountain. So when you think about Stenson, Stenson, you go, well, wait a second. You think about our map, Stenson, now we're looking south. Yeah, Stenson faces kind of south. That's why the swell's not getting in, right? So that's Montero Mountain there, Pedro Point here, San Francisco over here. So you're looking, we're looking basically due south. 
I know. Coastline. Direction of the way the coast faces. This is why Ocean Beach gets so much bigger. This is Ocean Beach just down the way a few miles. And Ocean Beach is kind of frothy and the wind is on shore because it faces due west. And the swell are essentially due west. So the swell is coming out of the northwest, the west, the southwest, the south. They, they, they get in. Whereas Stenson, a good swell out of the north, northwest, kind of, kind of get, it misses it. it. It trims it. We got outside set, just thumpy. A little bit of wind. The wind's still blowing offshore a little bit. Tide looks a little funky, too. This is uh, another example. This is where we were just looking. Sorry about this. I got to get this fixed. I hate that. Um, here we go. This is Lindemar. And that's the point we were looking at. We we're kind of looking at Montero Mountain. Um, this is Pedro Point right here. And again, same kind of thing. It fa This beach faces more north, right? So you're kind of like, well, so it's, but still the west swell is not, has trouble getting in here. A north swell uh, gets in here a little bit better. So we got Steamer Lane kind of winding through all this. Hmm. Or no, Pleasure Point, sorry. Two to four today. Swell stays small the next few days. Nothing real big. And that, you notice how that coincides with, um, it coincides with the lack of storminess in the Pacific, right? So the bigger, the more activity we have, the bigger, it's just all connected when we talk about that. This, this is Ledbetter's. I just like this beach because I know my son used to, he went to the JC down here and then went to UC. Um, but he was here a year and that, the JC is right up here on the hill. And he would come out here and send and text me from the beach. And I thought, well, what a what an awesome life, right? Being a kid, college kid and being at the beach. Okay, the birds, we'll do that. They are looking good. Glassy day on the lake, a little bit of wind up in the tree, 140 feet up. They're probably about 65 degrees. Again, this spot's above 6,000 feet. So they're pretty, they're pretty high up but it looks warm. I think the birds are gonna flourish. It's interesting how when the weather was bad, the food was coming, like dad was bringing a bunch of food. They were just feeding the babies. Cause I think they're very aware, right? This is a storm, especially the, the last big one. Um, and now they are uh, kind of mellowed out cause they know they can catch fish down that lake anytime they want. And the weather's not as bad, so they don't have to worry about staying as warm. Okay, so that's kind of a quick one. I don't hope it was inspired. Oh, one type of pollens. Yeah, we did. We talked about tree pollens, right? Yeah, good, good. I wanted to get that in. So if you got, if you're sniffling and sneezing and you go, God, it's always worse when I go to San Jose. Uh, that's why, because these developments have male trees in them. Um, so yeah, little nugget there. I will see you back here tomorrow. Have a great day.